Nissan bet the house with the Nissan Leaf. Electrification was the vision of Carlos Ghosn, the controversial figurehead for the brand who was arrested in Japan and fled to his home country of Lebanon a couple years back. Now after a decade of the Leaf being on the market, it looks like the Leaf is on the way out just after it got a refresh for the 2023 model year. So today we're going to take a look back at the Leaf and how it was a big failure for Nissan. <laughs> So let's talk about the timeline of the LEAF. In 2010, the Nissan LEAF hatchback was the world's first mass market electric vehicle. It debuted in the US and it was imported from Japan originally. It only had a range of less than 75 miles. Two years later in 2012, lithium ion battery production began for the LEAF at a brand new plant in Smyrna, Tennessee that cost the company $1.4 billion. This plant was built thanks to federal loans and had a capacity for up to 200,000 batteries per year. In 2013, the LEAF began production at Nissan Smyrna Vehicle Assembly Plant. In 2015, the LEAF got a 30 kilowatt hour battery pack and finally had enough range for over 100 miles. In 2017, we got a big update for the LEAF. Not only did it look different on the outside, we had a brand new range of 150 miles and one pedal driving was introduced to the LEAF as well as more safety features. In 2019, we got the LEAF E Plus and it had a bigger battery pack of 62 kilowatt hours and finally had a range of over 225 miles. Heading over to Nissan's newsroom, refreshed 2023 LEAF prices start at 27,800. Features updated, exterior interior design, standard technology, new aluminum alloy wheels, and a streamlined model lineup. They have just two models, the 40 kilowatt hour battery for 150 or so miles at $27,800. Then you have the SV Plus with a 60 kilowatt hour battery with 212 miles at $35,800. That's not including a $1,095 destination and handling fee. Automotive News is claiming that Nissan does not have a plan to bring out a next generation LEAF and instead it will replace it with a new model more tuned to the needs of the modern EV buyer. Sources were split on whether the LEAF name would continue and production of the current LEAF should end by mid-decade. I'd be okay if they scrapped the name LEAF. Look, I mean, sales were never great. Let's just pull up the sales numbers for you. Um, 2010, it began sales. It peaked in 2014 at 30,000 units, and this is like well before electrification was the big deal. Now it's a huge deal, and we look at 2021, and look, sales are rebounding. Nissan sales are in the gutter right now, and the LEAF is actually having a rebound. So it just goes to show you the market is ready for affordable EVs. There just really aren't that many out there. If we look at this, um, well, my spreadsheet here, Nissan leaf plus 237 miles of range well that's that's off of Edmonds testing it's not the numbers i just gave you that nissan shared with us but the nissan uh, ev tax credit is going away so they're out of tax credits so this vehicle is no longer 25 26k it's at 33k now and that's a harder sell but it's still way more affordable than the rest of these vehicles in its competition the Chevy Bolt is also back online. So the Chevy Bolt, no EV tax credit. And I think this vehicle is getting cheaper over time. So the Chevy Bolt is just a better buy than the Nissan uh, Leaf at this point anyways. Now, if we look forward to the future for, for Nissan, uh, we know we have the Aria coming. But late last year, Nissan announced its Ambition 2030 electrification plan, which targets 40% of its U.S. sales to be fully electric by the end of the decade, so 2030 with even more to feature electrified powertrains. So we don't have any Nissan or Infiniti hybrids. So to me, this ending of the sentence kind of confirms probably some e-power setups coming to the United States as well. We just don't know when and which models, et cetera. They said in earlier 2022, Nissan committed to investing $500 million into its Canton, Mississippi plant to produce all two all new vehicles one of them will be an infinity and they're both going to be sedans so it's like um the leaf is getting put by the wayside for this vehicle in canton mississippi and that's okay because the leaf is essentially a 12 year old electric car and they did make those updates like we mentioned to keep it somewhat relevant but there's only so much you could do to it 
But it doesn't stop there. The Japanese automaker is making a nearly 18 billion dollar bet on electrification delivering 15 battery electric models globally by 2030 guys with how conservative and how slow nissan is to introduce electric vehicles and even hybrids here stateside don't get too excited about 15 battery electric nissans coming by 2030 in the united states europe asia there's a good chance especially in china but not here we're going to have the Aria, which is supposed to be out later this year, which has already been delayed about a year, if not more. And we actually have news coming in from Japan that the Nissan Aria is uh, stopped production on one of the variants. So we'll talk about that at the very end. And we'll have the Nissan sedan. So that's two of them. So two EVs probably by 2025. So you, there's no way we're going to have 15 by 2030. Maybe five, I would say at this point. Now, Automotive News is saying Nissan could replace the Leaf with a coupe-like crossover, which the automaker teased last year in a sporty concept called the Chill Out. And that's based off the, uh, you know, the CMF EV platform shared with Renault, of course. Here's some B-roll of the Chill Out, just a real short video of it. I mean, this could replace the Leaf. This almost looks a little too... I mean, it's definitely smaller than the Aria. So I guess that would make sense in the era of crossovers to have something small like this. But... There are more vehicles in this Ambition 2030 uh, announcement that are way more tempting than what we just saw right there. So I'm going to pull up this for you guys. Of course, we have this little EV sports car, which would be amazing, but we're a long ways out from that. This little pickup truck, an electric pickup truck, would be incredible. But this vehicle right here in the back, it's called the Hangout, I believe. This one is the Surf Out. But the Hangout here is the ev that they need to bring this reminds me a little bit of like the honda element maybe the nissan cube a little bit um, this would be the vehicle that would just steal the hearts of many many people that cute crossover that we saw that white one called the chill out that's way more sporting this it's the, the i just feel like this vehicle this hangout concept would be the one to man get people excited about nissan again it's almost like the electric version. I mentioned the Cube, but I'm also getting Xterra vibes. And Nissan would be doing really well if the Xterra just kept having new models on the market. Look how well the 4Runner is doing, right? Right? So this is a vehicle I want Nissan to bring out uh, next to kind of replace the Leaf. If we look at a couple more images, my gosh, this thing looks so cool. I love the sunroof, the unique styling to it. Of course, this is super conceptualized, but if we can get something that looks somewhat similar, I'm not expecting doors to slide like this. I mean, it would be amazing to have some sort of unique functionality, kind of like um, the Honda Element did, right? But this would just be super cool. And then, yeah, we go into some other cars that I don't think need to be on the market anytime soon. This is happening in Japan right now. So we know that the Ari is coming out, looks great, should drive what great. I've heard really amazing things about the aria from those who have driven it but the the two-wheel drive aka the front wheel drive model called the b6 and the fair lady z known as the nissan z here have been suspended in japan so it doesn't look like japan is selling any more of those cars so production is just so low nissan has to prioritize where they can make the most money on the vehicles that they produce in japan Okay, so the yen is not particularly strong right now. Uh, the euro, the American dollar is going to make Nissan more money. So they need to prioritize these vehicles for external markets. Look, Toyota's doing the exact same thing. You look at um, the Land Cruiser and the Lexus LX. Those vehicles make a lot more money for uh, these Japanese companies if they're sold outside of their domestic markets. So that's why there's a four year waiting period for the new Land Cruiser and Lexus LX. But I need to end it there. Are you sad about the Leaf being canceled? No, it's not 100% official at this point. So take things somewhat with a grain of salt, but the Nissan Leaf, I just don't see having any future unless they completely redesign and reimagine what the Leaf could be. I think uh, that concept that we looked at today, the hangout concept, I think that's what it was, should be the vehicle that replaces it. And are you excited maybe for the Aria? Are you excited for the sedan as well that's going to come out of Camp, Mississippi? I'm really excited for Nissan. I just don't know how many electric models are going to be available here. Stateside by 2030, if they say 15 globally, I'm expecting five here in the States with 
a lot more hybrids, of course. But I need to cut myself off. I'll see you guys in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not. I really appreciate that. And special thanks to my members. You guys kick ass as always. Catch you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful day and peace out.